Federal prosecutors are charging the man accused of stabbing five people during a Hanukkah celebration just north of New York City this weekend with hate crimes. One victim remains in critical condition and what Governor Andrew Cuomo says is the 13th anti-Semitic attack in New York this month. And New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, well, this is the reason he gave for it. An atmosphere of hate has been developing in this country over the last few years. A lot of it is emanating from Washington, and it's having an effect on all of Wait, us. Wait, so you're saying you're blaming the president by saying Not it's coming from president. Washington? I'm saying, but we have to be clear. We need a different tone starting in Washington, okay, which so we had, by the way, with Democrats and Republicans both in the White House, that encouraged this country to actually find some unity and some common ground. We okay. haven't had that for the last few Let's years. Let's talk. Joining me now, liberal radio host Ethan Behrman and from the Trump 2020 advisory board, Steve Rogers. Let me start with you, Ethan. Um, so the, the, Mons, the Muncie, New York uh, suspect does not appear to me to be a, a Trump supporter. Uh, you know, I think he probably has some mental issues and, and, and he also is filled with hate. The New York City woman accused of anti-Semitic attacks, uh, slapping three Jewish women in, in, in a single day and actually being released by Mayor de Blasio's weak laws. Uh, also doesn't appear to be a Trump supporter to me. Is, it, is there ever a point when the Democrats pull back a little bit and, and say there's certain things happening in this country where the knee-jerk reaction is not to blame President Trump? Yeah, of course there are those times, Charles. And this is a horrific series of attacks. I've talked about it here on this network, the rise in Jew hatred, which most people call anti-Semitism. That's been uh, happening not just here and around the world, but most disturbingly here, because we need leaders from both sides to be clear and unequivocal, which the president wasn't clear and unequivocal, for example, with the Charlottesville situation. But yes, the leaders on the left, well, see, too, this see, is far left and it, far Ethan, right. You just did it yourself. I mean, okay, so... No, because he did for, fail, he, Charles. I, 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 I disagree. Make it clear. I, listen to oh, the entire tape clear. one day. One day, listen to the entire tape. And it's disingenuous to say Charlottesville was responsible for the, the Jew, Jewish people in New York who were attacked. I don't okay, think they were connected the at all. Synagogue, That's Charles. a disingenuous, unfair it's, thing it's that you're doing. By the way, by the way, I'm going to bring Steve Rogers in here because, Steve, this is the point. If every time something happens, Democrats blame President Trump and or his supporters, they're actually aiding and abetting these hate crimes in my mind. You're actually opening the door and saying to the people who commit them, hey, commit something heinous, do something yeah. evil, and it won't be your fault. It will be Trump's fault. Charles, you're absolutely right. Two important points. Number one, if regarding the uh, guest remark that the president hasn't been clear and unequivocal, well, he has. He's the only president I know in my lifetime who's done more to reduce violence in this country to support the police and to address anti-Semitism like he did. And let's reference what he's doing with colleges with regard to funding of colleges and what he's doing to bring the police and the community together. That's number one. Number two, the problem we're facing are, and you just nailed it, we have a mayor in a New York City who points fingers at the president, who supports bail reform, who lets people out of police departments before they go to prosecution, who supports policies that are hindering the police to do their job. We have police officers being hit, punched and kicked to the ground and the mayor's doing nothing. So the point is this. Don't blame President Trump. He's done all he could and is doing everything he can, but he needs the help of mayors I, and senators. I, I don't Congress. disagree that there's an a air of incivility in Washington, D.C. In fact, earlier this month, I had the uh, honor of sitting down with Vice President Mike Pence. I did ask him about the tone. I asked him about civility that we're seeing all around this country and whether that change needs to indeed come from Washington. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. There's always been and is now more that unites the people in this country that can ever divide us. And chief among those things is faith. It's faith in God and the traditions that we'll celebrate this month with Hanukkah and, and with Christmas. It's, uh, it, it's faith in the capacity of the American people to accomplish anything when they're given the freedom and the right. ability to accomplish that thing. And I, and I, I really do believe that on, on that foundation of faith, We'll get through these divided times. How confident are you, that, Ethan, that we can get through these divided times? That uh, I, I, Listen, I, I'm not sure how to exactly do it. I know that uh, race relations actually started to deteriorate under President Obama. Uh, and I'm not saying it's anything that he did. I'm just saying that, you know, I don't know what the causality of all these things are, other than it feels like there is an issue that we need to be addressing. 
You know, I'm, I'm actually very pleased to say that I agree with the vice president. That's not a common thing. But he is right. We have far more that actually connects us with, with each other as Americans. We have far more in common. It's easy to focus on the differences. But we are here. We're building lives. We believe in freedom and liberty. And that does connect us. We want the best for our children, for our grandchildren, for the future. It's how we get there that sometimes splits us apart. I mean, look, political division has been there from the founding of this country. It's not new. So those things will boil up at certain times, and it's definitely happening right now. But I will say this, I am very positive for the new year that things will get better, whether it's going to be better in 2020 or if it's in 2022. Right. I don't know, but I know that you and I have more, far more in common, Charles, than we, than we do different. Steve, I'm going to give you the last word, just less than 30 seconds now. Faith in God and trust in God, as the vice president said. So let's end it. Well, again. you believe the American people will get it. We're Americans. We're going to get through. I, f I feel like we always move toward that more perfect union, even though we do hit a few pit pitfalls here and there. Ethan, Stephen, Happy New Year, guys. Thank you. Happy New Year, Charles. Well, Sox giving back some of their records.